my next guest is a tattoo artist and a return returning guest. Because the first time you, you know, she she heard of me. I heard of her because I see her on TV and all that good stuff. But this time we have a relationship because I'm going out to L.A. next week. I'm dropping by the shop. She's a painter, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and social media influencer, and has opened her own tattoo shop in Los Angeles called Enigma Tattoo early this summer in June. Please welcome back to Money Making Conversations. I'm proud to say that. Cat Tat. What's up, girl? <laughs> hey, hey. Thank you so much for having me again. I come a long way since the last time we I talked. Know, I know. I know. Let's talk about it. That's why I'm happy to have you back on the show and everything because, you know, <laughs> when I, when I, when, you know it's always a journey with everything. That's, that was approximately about mm, seven months ago when we talked, about eight months ago when we talked, and, and you was finding yourself, you was making some decisions, and you were doing great things, but you've seen to be, not not what you wanted to be at that moment. So let's talk about that journey where you're at right now. I, I love, first of all, I can tell there's a difference in your tone and your energy. You feel really, not saying you're a negative person, but your spirit seems right. Thank you. You know, I really, really appreciate that. Um, I've been out in Los Angeles for almost two years now, and it was a lot of just figuring it out. Once you just kind of step out on faith and move to an entire new city, not knowing, you know, too many people, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a big risk. So it took me a while to get it figured out. And um, finally, I feel like I got my purpose back, you know, being a tattoo artist um, my entire adult life since I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, me finally having my own tattoo shop just puts everything in perspective for me. And I feel like I'm actually moving forward now instead of running in circles. <laughs> now, that then you slid that out rather smoothly, my own tattoo shop. Because we didn't even talk about that eight months ago. Was that was yeah. that in the process eight months ago? It's weird. Like I said, I've been tattooing for so long. Mm-hmm. It, um, like tattooing is just my, my passion, and right. that's what I do. And I'm so focused on creating mm-hmm. and just figuring out, you know, where I wanted to live with, you know, the TV show and so much happening at one time. Mm-hmm. I feel like I didn't even really have the time to think about to put together a plan, like, okay, I'm going to move here and open up my shop. Like, right. it really just, um, it set on my spirit when when I felt like it was the right time, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it it took me a long time, but, like, I once I felt like, okay, now this is time for me to pursue this, right. um, I went and looked at spaces and, you know, started putting the pieces together as to what it would take. And then um, from there, it just started rolling. So it was really like a six-month process from, you know, actually... That's yeah, famous. but the trade was so um, has been there for so long that right. it was. Well, it you got a, well, you got a brand. You got a brand. You have a following, so that's what helps. And social media helps you out. Help help you make that decision to open as well, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, just being a tattoo artist, you know, there's no bigger platform that you can ask for from a national TV show to you know hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. It's like it's a blessing that you can't take for granted, and you got to take. Full advantage of it. And you have been. So let's talk about this whole process, because my show, Money Making Conversation, is about entrepreneurship. It's about people Uh making that decision that you made. Like you said, eight months ago, we discussed, you was talking, you didn't bring up the idea that I was going to open my own tattoo shop in Los Angeles called Enigma Tattoo. Now, I lived in Los Angeles 15 years. Where about is it? So you can can talk to me. Where where did you open the shop and where are the locations and why you chose this location? Um, it's Beverly Hills area. It's right on the corner of Pico and Robertson. And anybody Girl, I know that exactly um, is where from you LA, is. yeah, everybody that is from here that comes by, they're like, "Man, you couldn't have picked a, a better location." <laughs> so <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out um, the location. I lived. I used to live in North Hollywood, and I didn't want to do it there. Yeah, you're way, you're um, way away. The, you oh, that's a that's a that's a one on one. That's one on one north, right? North okay. Hollywood. Uh, um, North Hollywood. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yep. But I'm not there anymore. I moved closer to the shop. Mm-hmm, see. <laughs> but um, yes. Yeah, so, and then I looked in Culver City, and I looked um, on Melrose, where every other spot was a tattoo shop, and none of it felt right to me. So I was actually going to get my hair done um, at this salon in that area, and I'm looking around. I'm like, what area is this? And then so I just drove all up and down Pico, and I wrote down the phone number to all the vacant spots. And there was one that just looked like it had so much potential to me. So I went, I looked through the window, I wrote down the number, (laughs) I called, got the prices and everything. And then from there, I connected with a commercial realtor and he just closed the deal for me. And um, 
everything went smooth from there. <laughs> so this is so cool. So I know Pico and Robinson, that's the location of Enigma Tattoo that's owned by Cat Tat. Now, Cat Tat, let's talk mm-hmm. about this. So because it was really a cool conversation. So do you have any employees or are you there by yourself? How to, how was working there? What's going on? Oh, no, absolutely. There are uh, six of us total, six amazing um, mm-hmm. artists. Sound like a TV the, show to me. Mm-hmm. Sound like a TV <laughs> show to me. Hey, I, I will take that. Well, I know that right, but, um, Cat Tat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not mad yeah, if I so, see you on TV now. I'm just going to let you know that. I'm speaking it. So yeah, I'm speaking the word so it can come true, okay? <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, let's, let's put that in the air. <laughs> but, um, yeah, six of us total, all great, amazing tattoo artists. Um, and it's just a blessing to be able to work uh, with other amazing artists. Since right. I moved here, I've just been kind of doing my own thing, traveling, doing right. private right. sessions, private right. studios. So now it's like, okay, now I can build something where we can all come together and, you know, do something even greater. This is interesting. Let me ask so. you this. So, because this is really, really cool conversation because we're talking about business, how you started your business from uh, six months ago. You you driving up and down the street. You were looking at, you looked in shops in different areas, Culver City, North Hollywood, Hollywood. And you settled on this location. Now you're telling me, Rashawn, I'm not in there by myself. I have six other people. Okay, you're a celebrity tattoo artist. How did you choose the other six people to come on board? Did, did they have to have a social media following? Did they have a, have a client base? Did you look at their artwork or they came with recommendations? Uh, how did that work? Yeah, um, you know what? When I feel like once you enter the art world and the tattoo world, all that celebrity and TV stuff doesn't mean anything. You could be on TV, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you could be doing crappy work on TV. So mm-hmm. for me, it was all about the art, all about their skill set, you know, their um, their own clientele and everything. And I pretty much, like, cherry-picked the artist, and I just, I was actually nervous to approach them because I'm like, why would they want to come and work for me, you know, right. I was really, mm-hmm. really nervous. I was kind of timid. So I just, you know, I just went out for it and I sent them emails or texts or reached out to them how I could. And I asked if they would want to sit down and go to lunch with me so I can tell them a little bit about what I'm doing. That's awesome. And it worked. Like, you know, they were stoked to come on board. <laughs> and now we're just forming an amazing team. So it's, I'm just blessed. Okay, this is cool. <laughs> now, what is your vision of a... Uh, of a tattoo shop, you know, store, your location. What what makes you when you walk in there, what when Rashawn walks in there, what 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 about what, what what world am I walking into? Well, when you ask like if I had always planned on opening up a tattoo shop, I come from, you know, the tattoo industry, small right. towns mm-hmm. from my college town. Mm-hmm. And all tattoo shops were kind of small, hole in the wall. Uh-huh. You know, some people are kind of like mean at the front desk. It's very gritty. And that's not me. Like, I know I'm a tattoo artist, but I'm also a businesswoman, and I always think big. So for I me to it. have a tattoo shop, I didn't want just a little hole in the wall, there you, go. you know, biker type intimidating shop. Like, I wanted something that would appeal to people in all different categories, not just the tattoo industry. I wanted it to appeal to people who are interested in art, who are interested in beauty, and just I wanted it to be very, very high class. So I, when you I walk love in, this. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is, I, <laughs> so I think I, that's I, people's... In- it's like a, it's like oh. I'm walking in and it's just like a, a, it's an experience. That's what you've created, an experience. Yes, absolutely. So people's first impression when they walk in is just like, man, like this, you know, I've never seen a tattoo shop like this. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, hold that thought right there. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more with my girl, Cat Tat. Open a new tattoo studio called Enigma Tattoo. Right at the at Pico and Robinson in Hollywood, Los Angeles. Just say closer to Beverly Hills. All right. Listen to Money Making Conversation. Of course, I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald, and I'm talking to Cat Tat. She's on fire. She's on fire because she just, this summer in June, she opened a new tattoo location called Enigma Tattoo. Pico and Robinson. That's an amazing location to be. And I like that we walked through the steps of uh, opening the shop. The, it was six months, uh, getting the right people, because a lot of people open open businesses without a brand, without a concept. And she she had a brand. She established her brand on television. She established her brand in social media. So at least she had a, a, a marketing platform that she could work with. And then also, like she said earlier, just because you tattoo on TV, TV don't mean you're a tattoo artist off of TV. 
And we all know she's a highly recognized tattoo artist because celebrities are walking around with a tattoo. One thing you don't do is a celebrity walk around with a with a busted tattoo because then you get memed on uh, <laughs> social media and you out of the game fast. Okay, but uh, because I, I, I always run there's just a little history between her, about her. You know, she went to college in Columbia at the University of Missouri. Reason I have a natural a natural connection with her because mathematics. So, you know, my degree is in mathematics, and that was her degree plan was in mathematics. So we always going to have that natural relationship. But I always, but she told me in my interview with her that she started tattooing while she was in college. And explain it to everybody how that got started, because I was like, so people just let you practice on them? And uh, so, so explain to everybody how you got started in college, and then we're going to come back and talk about uh, some new ventures that you are, are, are a brand ambassador of. Um, so in college, I was... My personality, I'm just very outgoing. Um, I like talking to people. So and attractive, and attractive, and attractive. Okay, just go and say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, just go, that, that helps a guy going, okay, let, I'll let her practice. Maybe she give me a phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that had a small part to do with it, too. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so no, I made a lot of friends, and um, I was very, um, I don't know, I just, I ordered up a kit one day and I, people had this seen so my cool. artwork because I had mm-hmm. always drawn pictures and painted and stuff like that. So people um, saw my artwork and then, you know, like when you go to college, it's like your chance to like recreate yourself. Like right. people don't know where you come from. Or, mm-hmm. So I had already introduced myself as a tattoo artist as if I had already been doing it. Like, yeah, I'm from <laughs> Chicago. I'm a tattoo artist. Never did it before. But I ordered up a kit and I had people um, just believe in me. And then when I got my first client in the chair, that's when I let them know, like, I actually never did this before. <laughs> but when you're... You know, a freshman in college, like, that's one of the most free spirit, free spirited times of a, a person's life is that freshman year of college. Hold on, so hold on, hold on, hold on, just- can't tell you, hold on. Okay, this person is sitting in his chair. I'm assuming it's a dude, okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> so you telling him, okay, what tat- What type of tattoo was he was he thinking about? What 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 was his? Uh, and you told him this is my first time. Okay, let's talk. Let's walk through that step because that's that's a really convincing moment for you right there. Yeah, no, he already had a really, really crappy tribal tattoo, and I was just going <laughs> to fill it in for him. I was oh, going to okay. uh, fix it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, so he trusted me to fix it. I got, like, almost halfway through, and I had so many people in my dorm room, like, watching me. I wasn't right. even nervous, but everybody, right. like, 20 people came down just to watch me, um, just to watch me do this. And, launch. like, mm-hmm. halfway through, my machine, like, broke. <laughs> so... I was like, yeah, I'm going to figure this out and I'll get back to you. And then um, I'd network with some other tattoo artists and found someone who taught me how to set up my machine the right way. Mm -hmm. And then I revisited his tattoo at a later date and then I fixed it. And then from there, uh, I just started putting my work out on Facebook and everybody around the campus, you know, um, heard that there was a tat girl. So that's (laughs) how I got my name, you know, cat tat girl. Um, And then I just started tattooing everybody on campus, like the... You know, all the Kappas, the Qs, all the Greeks, you know, um, all the athletes just started getting work from me. And I became more of a tattoo artist than a student. So that's when I knew, like, okay, my life is kind of going two different ways. Like, am I a student? Am I studying math? Or am I a tattoo artist? <laughs> so after um, a few years of, you know, being consistent with tattooing is when I decided that this is what I'm going to do full time. But, but the, the great thing I like about it was that, you know, you put in your time and you developed your career. You know, as you mm-hmm. jump out there, off of, know that you let failure stop you. And then then when you fail, right. you came in a way, you, you said, look, I need to learn how to really do this correctly. And somebody showed you yeah. how to do it correctly. And you've been you've been moving forward. Now, when you when you make a career change like that to say, hey, I'm going to invest myself in this, because this is not a traditional way of people generating revenue. I remember when I left IBM to tell jokes as a stand up comic, people kind of looked at me like, Really? Really? How you gonna uh, make money? My dad used to work for IBM too. See, we we friends. We uh, friends. Uh, that's my girl right here. You know, I, 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 we gonna get along real good, cat cat. Okay, whenever you need somebody, I'm, I'm your big brother. Okay, we gonna make this happen. Thank you so much. So let's talk about this new. What well, you're a brand ambassador of Shoe Dazzle? You know, your, your yeah. response to you becoming a brand ambassador of Shoe Dazzle has been amazing. Let's talk about that whole uh, how that came about and and how one can order the shoes. Um, you know, just like I said, um, with this whole tattoo shop, it's like, you know, like I'm more than, you know, just a tattoo artist. Like I'm still a very relatable girl. I think my fashion sense translates very well with my following. 
So when we got the opportunity to meet with um, Shoe Dazzle, I think they were a little iffy, you know, on going a route with the tattoo artist because people had that preconceived notion of, mm-hmm. you know, tattoo artist, kind of biker, kind of edgy. But they took a chance with me and um, collaborated with me. And, I mean, we just picked out such amazing, cute shoes. Like, I got style, too. So we picked out this collection of shoes. And, I mean, my audience, my following, they just, Love, love, love it. And um, they've been signing up for, you know, the VIP uh, through the, um, my page on their site. And they just love the shoes. The shoes are super, super cute. They're um, very fashionable, very affordable. And um, it's just been very, very successful. They tell me that my uh, giveaway performed super, super well. Very, very uh high engagements and everything. Um, we put together an amazing commercial, of just kind of like a day in the life of Cat's Hat, and it's mm-hmm. like a different shoe for every, you know, scene of the day. Um, so it's just a huge blessing. I'm, I'm loving working with them. They're an amazing, amazing brand to work with, and I want to, you know, just continue it. Now, did, when we talked last time, I told you Cat's Hat. Whatever you need, of them, social media, man, you need something out there. That's the purpose of money making conversation. Now I'm hearing all this for the first time. Where are my banners? Banners? Where are my 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 videos so I can post it on my social media so I can support Cat Cat oh. Girl? Oh yeah. I'll send all that to you. I'll make sure we get that to you right away. Yeah. And it looks like today is Monday now. Don't let me see you Tuesday next week standing in that beautiful Enigma tattoo salon and you've not sent me anything. You know, don't do me like no. that, girl. Don't do me like that. Now. I promise I'm not. I'm going to get on it right when we hang up. I promise. There we go. <laughs> see, that's a, see, that sounds like, sound like a friend talking to you right now because I really, I, because that's how it works, you know, because I tell you what you do. I, my, my national newsletter goes out this week. I have over 230,000 mm-hmm. fan club members. If you can give me a banner, like tomorrow, I put it in there because I'm, I'm, I'm shipping it out on Thursday. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm literally writing it down right now, so I'll get on the phone and Girl, have that. Girl, up here making money. Right away. Thank you so much. I don't even understand why I got such a good relationship with Cat Tag Girl. I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's God. <laughs> I know that's right. So, again, with all these great things that are happening to you, let's go back to your, you know, giving back uh, part of your life. You know, that was something that really uh, affected me positively about you. What are, what are you involved in right now from a charity standpoint, from a, from a philanthropist standpoint? Talk to us right quick. Um, well, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, the Genesee Center for Domestic Violence, and that's been consistent. And then um, also with the tattoo shop, um, being right where it is, right in the center of the city, um, it's given me an opportunity to do more hands-on things with things that are currently going on within the community. Mm-hmm. So right now, um, you know, kids are going back to school. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, let's use this location to have a back-to-school drive. People can drop off uh, school supplies, backpacks, anything, um, clothes, anything that, you know, um, kids and teenagers might need before they go back to school. And then we're going to be um, giving that to the Boys and uh, Girls Club of Los Angeles. So that's what I'm currently working on. Um, and I just want to do more stuff like that. Like let's use this location to always just help people and really give back, be, become a part of uh, the community. Like I was in Chicago. Now I'm able to do that here as well. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, let me Thank ask you this final question here in regards to your artwork you was doing, you was displaying some of your paintings and galleries. Where are we at right now with that? Um, well, right now, my tattoo shop is kind of like an art gallery. I love um, it. All the paintings. Yeah, so there's artwork. All my artwork is currently on the walls. And then the other tattoo artists there who are painters will be hanging up their artwork. The next thing I want to do is do a, um, a collaborative art show with all the artists so people can come out and see that, you know, these tattoo artists are, are also painters. And then from there, I'm going to do my annual solo art show. Um, it will be my third one in Los Angeles. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll probably be around November. Girl, I'm, I'm talking to a, uh, a businesswoman. I'm talking to an artist. I'm talking to a person who gives back to the community. Um, I'm so impressed with you. And thank you for coming thank back on you. my show. Really, this is just a different person that I'm talking to now. A, a really <laughs> person who's in control of your future. That's what I hear screaming through this uh, these phone lines right now. And I, I'm there for you. Definitely get that banner to me so I can put it in my newsletter. I'm very serious about that. They will, they, and the URL link, they will click right back to Shoe Dazzle. And uh, let's win. Okay.